cultural rights forms an integral part within the culture of the Akan people of Ghana. Like myself, if you grew up within the Ashanti region of Ghana, chances are your parents or grandparents regularly went away on funeral runs during weekends, leaving you with numerous household chores that had to be completed by their return. Though I spent most of my childhood wondering why I had to lose my beloved mother on weekends to funerals, I've come to the realization, as the saying goes, no one does things for the sake of it. That there are very important reasons for these funeral rites. So in this video, I show you some of the hidden meaning of modern Akan funeral rites in Ghana. I say modern as most of the old traditions has been modified or excluded due to several reasons. <laughs> My name is Mickey. Keep watching. Accounts form part of the six major ethnic groups in Ghana. That also includes Ewes, Gahadamwes, Mole Dabwanis, Guans, Gema or the Gurumas and the Grusi, Kusasi, and Konkombes. There are over 100 tribes within these ethnic groups. Akans believe life to be a passage made up of stages, and at the beginning of every stage, there is a specific initiation rite performed to usher an Akan individual into that stage. These stages are birth, where Abadinto or naming ceremonies are performed to usher an Akan baby into their new world. Bragro or purity rites are performed to usher an Akan teenager into adulthood. When an Akan is able to find him or herself a suitor or a life partner, Awarije or marriage rites, mind you, not white wedding, is performed. And as the saying goes, Eduyanyin chese deya ebu. No matter how tall a tree grows, it will one day fall down. A year of funeral rites is what is performed to usher a deceased Akan into the spirit world to meet his or her ancestors. It is believed the spirit of the deceased lingers around the physical world until funeral rites are performed. Akans also believe in reincarnation, but that will be a topic for another day. A typical Akan funeral rite is performed within a three-day period. Normally from Friday to Sunday, depending on who the deceased is. Fridays are normally when the final preparations are made, which is normally characterized by the cooking of food to serve mourners and well wishes. In the olden days, the cooking and serving of food during mourning of the departed was not encouraged, but with people traveling from afar and leaving their livelihoods behind to bid farewell, the least the bereaved can do is to get them fed. As Akans place a lot of importance on the family unit, if like this particular funeral, the deceased was in their old age, the funeral rite is centered around the final respect paid not by his or her own children, but rather their in-laws. And this final show of respect is done through the parading and presentation of specially crafted ornaments to the family of the deceased throughout the funeral rite, popularly known as NCA. The importance and meaning behind these ornaments is explained to me by an expert. Mm -hmm. 
The first ornament presented on the eve of the morning the deceased will be laid in state is called a jadier or bathing ornament. A jadier is only presented by the daughters-in-law of the deceased as it is believed that it is their responsibility to run the bath of their parents-in-law. In the olden days, a jadier would only consist of soap, sponge, towel and powder. All these would be put in a pan locally known as yawa. These items will then be paraded and taken to the deceased family home where he or she will be laid in state. <laughs> The music that accompanies the ornament is an Akan royal court dance called Kete. The name Kete simultaneously refers to the specific set of instruments, namely Kwadum, the lead drum, Apentema, Dero, Dondo, and a few more. The music played by those instruments and the dance performed to the music. The red and black fabric draping the Kete drums is locally known as Emojanisum, meaning blood and darkness. The hand gestures made during the Kete dance are used to convey messages of emotions and authority in the case of royals. The Kete ensemble is a common theme during an Akan funeral rite. Arrival at the deceased family home, the in laws, through their nominated spokesperson, locally known as Chiame, will announce their arrival and will be allowed to greet the family. <laughs> In Akan's culture, a group of seated elders are greeted from your right to your left, with your left hand behind your back to show respect. However, if there is a chief or a king in the midst of these elders, he will be greeted first no matter where he sits. After greeting, the family of the deceased through their spokesperson will also welcome the in-laws and ask them the reason behind their visit. <laughs> The in-laws, through their spokesperson, will tell the family their reason for the visit, which is locally known as Amanebo, and in so doing, will show off the ornaments in grand style. In locations like this, there is always one person from the family home who, under the influence of alcohol, would like to cause commotion, to gain attention and to get their voices heard. A modern day ejadeh consists of the following items. Toilet rolls, drinking water, chewing stick, lime, bathing water, local sponge and flip-flop, Cakes of soap, liquid soap, bar soaps for washing, towels, briefs, beads, schnapp, pillow, blankets, local mats, and bear sheets. The family of the deceased will receive these items, and this is how they locally say thank you. <laughs> Some of these items will be used to prepare the body of the deceased to go on show early tomorrow morning. The remainder in the olden days used to be kept for family members who depart with no kids. But nowadays, the remainder will be shared among the family members. The 
dawn of the second day, usually a Saturday, of an Akan funeral rite is dedicated to the laying in state of the deceased at their family house. This is to allow family and friends to pay their last respects before they begin their journey to the ancestral world. In the olden days, Akans will bury the deceased as soon as possible to prevent the painful process of preserving the body as there were no morgues at the time. The only exception were kings and queens whose bodies would be embalmed and preserved with the use of the echampon leaves to allow other royals from nearby villages to come and pay their homages before they were buried. Nowadays, due to technological advancement, unless their demise was caused by suicide, a horrific accident or a young first deceased child, the deceased are kept for at least a week before their burial and funeral rites. This is to allow migrated family members enough time to come home to pay their final respects to the deceased. Though keeping the deceased at the morgue for an extensive period of time can be an expensive process, I personally think it allows time for grief and closure for the bereaved. The color of the attire worn during laying in state is black, locally known as breezy, and red, called cobney. Close family members like children, grandchildren, and in-laws of the deceased can be identified just from the distinct attire they are wearing. The laying in state, though a sad moment, is an opportunity for mourners to show their prestigious kitty dancing skills. Well wishes at this point are allowed to make funeral donations to help the family for some of the cost of the funeral. <laughs> Before the deceased is taken to the cemetery for burial, the next set of items locally known as Adisidie, ornament for burial, will be presented by the in-laws through their spokesperson. Son-in-laws are now allowed to also present Adisidie. These are items that are believed will help the deceased on their long journey to their ancestors. The song sung during the presentation conveyed message of reverence to the deceased and sadness from the bereaved. In the olden days, Adisadia would only comprise of the following items, handkerchiefs, white pearl, scarf or duku, white cloth, sleeping mat or kete, pillow and sleeping clothes for women. In the case of men, clothes, danta, sleeping mat and pillow and sleeping clothes. By modern day Adisadia will consist of the following clothes, palm wine, locally known as insenfu for mourning, toffees, matches and candle to light their path on their journey, pillow and mat, and plenty more. Money tied in a handkerchief is even added, which is believed that it is will use to buy basic needs on their journey to their ancestral world. These items will be given to the family to use to prepare the deceased for their final journey. The palm wine, however, will be shared among mourners, which helped give them energy in the olden days as the serving of food during mourning was not allowed. Nowadays, eating, as mentioned earlier, is allowed. After the deceased is put in a casket, which by the way will be bought from contributions made by their children, nieces and nephews, a worship or pouring of libation will be performed. Tributes from family members will be read before the deceased is put in a hearse to start their journey to the spirit world. It is worth mentioning that royals are not supposed to be buried during daytime. In this case, the casket containing the body will be kept at the family home until sunset before they are taken to the cemetery for burial. After this process, the young men in the deceased person's family will now set up for the main funeral rites to take place in the afternoon. <laughs> The 
The gathering after the burial process, which normally takes place on Saturday afternoons and perceived to be the main funeral rite, is dedicated to the consoling of the bereaved and the family left behind. In the tree language, you will say, Yeprani kra 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 kra, meaning the final occasion to conclude the mourning. After the deceased is taken to the cemetery, young men from the family in the olden days will be sent to the forest to go and bring palm leaves to create a shade to protect mourning from the weather elements. But nowadays, it's been replaced by fabric canopies. In the olden days, the widow, if the deceased was male, together with old women from the family dressed in black signifying darkness that has reached the family and red signifying blood or bereavement, will cry through the town and end up at the funeral grounds. The sons and brothers of the deceased will be draped in cobney or red clothes and the daughters and sisters will tie black clothes from their torso to their feet and wrap red clothes on top of it. In the olden days, daughters and women closely related to the deceased will cut their hair short and dye their hair using carbon residue and charcoal from the kitchen which will be mixed with shea butter cream. This hairstyle is called Mpoesia, nowadays dubbed dancing crime. Dancing crown, however, is not the local name, but rather our ancestors trying to say dancing crown, a name given to the hairstyle by Europeans whenever they saw it worn by traditional dancers. In the olden days, children of the deceased, in addition to the red and black clothes, will wear a hat covered with a net, meaning their breadwinner is gone. Eggshell, signifying their shattered lives and the broken relationship with the deceased. Keys and calories, which is locally known as Sidi, and they would sit together with their mom on a mat at the funeral grounds, which is locally known as Eipa or Eikete. Widows, if the deceased is male, are not allowed to be greeted, as it is believed that men might make advances through the tickling of their palm. Funeral donation is a very important aspect of this occasion, as these traditions do not come cheap. The centerpiece of the main funeral rites is the show of the final set of items by the in-laws called Adichredi. These items are used to console the children of the deceased. A modern day at the trade consists of the following items handkerchiefs, toffees, matches, water, and assorted drinks. Again, the family will receive the items and thank the in laws. The remainder of the occasion will now be drumming, dancing, and collection of donations. p.m. if there is a chief or a royal at the funeral grounds he or she will be the first to leave the occasion and the funeral rite will officially conclude with the children of the deceased doing a final dance of respect I hope you are getting value from this video. Um, as you can see me dressed up, today is the final day and there is a different theme when it comes to what we wear. For the last two days you've been seeing black and red. Today Sunday, the Thanksgiving service, to crown it, um, we want to finish the morning on a brighter note. So look at what we are wearing. 
you'll realize that a lot of people will be wearing black and white. So take note of that. The third and final day of Akan Funeral Rites is more for Thanksgiving and the celebration of life. At this point, the bereaved will come to an acceptance that life will have to go on without the disease. Early in the morning, before the afternoon gathering, the family of the deceased will go to church for a Thanksgiving service, then walk around the neighborhood to thank them for their support for the last couple of days before they come to the final gathering. As mentioned earlier, the theme is to conclude the morning period on a brighter note, which is depicted through the wearing of white-dominated outfits. Funeral donations will still be accepted on this day. Good food will also be served. The rest of the occasion will just be the drowning of sorrows with good music and dance. As always, if there is a chief or a royal in attendance, they will leave the occasion before 6 p.m., which will bring the funeral rites to a conclusion. The family will then meet the next day at the family home just to make accounts, nominate who will inherit or stand in for the deceased, and tie off all loose ends after the funeral. In conclusion, I would like to point out that the customs and traditions performed in a perfect Akan funeral rite is enormous and I will admit this funeral did not touch even half of them. Some of them will simply be too expensive and time consuming. It is my prayer that with time our culture and tradition do not fade away due to this reason. I will also admit that there are numerous tribes under the Akan ethnic group who would do things differently to the Ashantis to whom this funeral pertains. Please let me know if you think modern funeral rites is now a waste of money as there is an argument that family members are ignored until they pass on and then money will be spent on funeral rites. I would also love to learn from you so please let me know if there are any interesting traditions that I missed out. Please contact this knowledgeable and eloquent lady for all your funeral presentation needs. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one.